Well, hello, Jamie. How are you? <laughs> Darling, I'm good. I feel like we're in Britain talking all prim and proper. Very <laughs> <laughs> posh if we like. You can put that accent on. But darling, <laughs> that's not why we're here. Anyway. <laughs> Oh gosh, we we're we're taking like the summer easy. We're having some summer fun, right? And um, we've got a little summer series, but we will be alternating and doing every other week. We'll have an episode out for our listeners, just so that you guys know. Um, you know, summer is just a busy time. Kids are out of school. We have VBSs at our churches. Yeah. All yeah. the fun things for summer, and so. Oh, yeah. You know, Jamie and I decided we would take it easy a little bit this summer and not try to cram in too many episodes. Um, but we are going to do a wonderful series. I think it's wonderful about women in the Bible. And we're probably going to talk about people. We're going to talk about the common, you know, themes. We're going to probably hit on the Marys or the Marthas. All right. But today we're talking about somebody that I think she kind of gets lost in the scriptures and uh and that's anna so we're doing a full series on women in the bible and we're excited about it um and then before we kind of get into that series just really quickly i want to give a plug because uh we have a really special guest that's going to be coming on at the end of this month and uh, her name is brandy pope and we do we will have different guests coming in but for the most part you know summer's busy for people it's hard to get guests on the show um so we are going to be taking the the brunt of it and and really tackling these different people in the bible but brandy mm -hmm. just as as a little plug for her um she is such a woman of god like that first and foremost brandy is a spirit-filled spirit-led woman who is you know, she just wants what God wants in her mm -hmm. life and in the lives mm -hmm. of those around her. And she speaks truth. She is also on TikTok and Instagram and these are platforms that God's opened up doors for her to use, but he is using her mightily in women's ministry throughout different places up and down the East coast. Um, she was also a beauty pageant winner. She has, um, a line of eyeshadow palettes that are, you know, named after her because her name online is Glam Bell. Brandy is just <laughs> a solid, lovely woman of God. That's all I can say about her um, and the communications that I've had with her thus far and that everything that I see on social media, she's living out. She lives mm -hmm. out her life for Christ. And the one thing that caught my attention when I started following Brandy, because I love to watch people do makeup, you know, that's like mm -hmm. her but it's artwork. I mean, <laughs> it is. And she's beautiful, but she's not just beautiful on the outside. She's beautiful on the inside. And the thing mm -hmm. I love about Brandy was like, at one point, it was this one video she said where she was like, I'm probably going to lose people over this, but I just don't care. And she just laid it out on the line about her relationship with Christ where she stood with things. And I was like, let's go. So yeah. And she's from Virginia, right? That's her. She's in, yeah, she's in Richmond, Virginia. Yeah. That's where she lives. And mm -hmm. so I would encourage anybody who is listening today, go look up Miss Brandy Pope or Glam Bell as she goes by. She's on TikTok. She's on Instagram, probably on Facebook too, but those are the areas I follow her and, um, listen when she speaks because girlfriend doesn't just put on makeup and talk about the best highlighters that are out there right now. She will mm -hmm the word and she brings words that the Lord is laying upon her heart on a regular. So um, I'm excited about that. Yeah, it's good, good stuff. But let's talk about Anna. Let's highlight this woman of God. Like, gosh, to be like Anna, she is that, she is literally listed in Luke two. Are you ready? Verses mm -hmm. six to 37, three verses. That's it. That's, That's all Anna gets. Mm -hmm. There's so much about her, right? I mean, you said there's a lot to unpack with Anna. Yeah, there is. I mean, just knowing that she waited and waited and waited at the temple, just waiting for the Messiah. And she knew that he was coming. Yeah. And, and she fasted and she prayed and she was very diligent. Yeah. And then her time came. Yeah. That moment came for her. It's 
it's amazing how God used her in her old age. I think they said that she was like 105 or something. Am I wrong about that? Or um, I didn't get an age in there. Um, I just, I only got, well, well let's read those verses and then we can jump yeah. into those details real quick. Yeah. Um, Cause when I went into the commentary in the study Bible, I couldn't find an age on her, but maybe you found one in another commentary. Yeah. I was looking at a different commentary. Yeah. So, uh, it's Luke two 36 through 38. And I'll just read them. I'm reading all the LSB. Um, and it says, and there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin. And then as a widow to the age of 84, she never left the temple serving night and day with fasting and prayers. And at that very moment, she came up and began giving thanks to God and continued to speak of him to all those who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And now, so that is happening when Jesus is presented at the temple by his mother and father as a baby. And they're making a sacrifice, for, for, you know, bringing him there, doing what the law said to do. And so that's, that was her encounter. So 84 years this woman is a widow mm. and yeah. she commits herself to the temple. Yes. Mm. That is, I think that for me, there's a couple of things with Anna that just stick out. And um, we, we know that she's, she's called a prophetess mm -hmm. in the Bible. And back then, you know, prophets weren't necessarily speaking directly to you as an individual telling you what God was saying. But it was for the people. What was God saying to the people at that time? But there was another person there with her as well, Simeon. Simeon. And he's there at the same time. So you've got these two old people that have been waiting in the temple, praying mm -hmm. night and day for the Messiah to come. And here he comes, but not in the form that they anticipated. But didn't they recognize him? Didn't they see this is him they knew holy spirit just dropped that on them mm -hmm. and i think it's so exciting but you know with with anna i i kind of pulled out just bullet points about her and i i wonder how much we've got that are that is mirroring and it'll be so interesting to see um but i you know she's from the tribe of asher that's something that's yeah. obviously important yeah. right you know and yeah. um she was a widow that was only married for seven years mm -hmm. and she served in the temple day and night, fasted and prayed. Um, and that, you know, she was alone physically, yet she was constantly in communion with God, always in his presence. So there's just like factual stuff that we know about her, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so I love that, like, when I looked up the tribe of Asher, they were the tribe that was known for olive oil, but not just that it was used in the temple. They were the ones that brought the oil to the temple to be made into that anointing oil. Mm. And Asher also so means happiness. So when we think about that, Moses actually prayed over Asher, a blessing with children acceptable to mothers and he dipped his foot in the oil and i just think it's so interesting because with jesus comes that holy spirit anointing mm -hmm. we look in the presence of the holy spirit like oil that it just mm -hmm. washes over us and that's what they used for that anointing in the temple and here she is this woman that's a widow hanging out in the temple coming from this tribe that brings the oil in, but then she sees the one that's really going to bring the anointing. That's going to change everything. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, it's, it's beautiful when you yeah. identify what tribe was she from and how does mm -hmm. that even matter? Yeah. It yeah. And it just, you know, her heart, just like you said, just unpacking it in those couple of verses you know, women, you know, were prominently in the New Testament, you know, but when they are, they, they definitely get highlighted, oh, yeah. you know, and Anna, oh my gosh, when you were talking about her just now with the oil and knowing that she was a widow 
and she was so desperate for the salvation of the Lord. I thought about Mary, Ma you know, not Mary Magdalene, but the woman at the well and just her wanting that anointing as well, even though she wasn't waiting, you know, she wasn't like fasting and praying, but Lord Jesus engaged her. And I just think it's neat how the Lord is so good that a prophetess came to Jesus when he was a newborn baby. It's so special. Jesus loved women. He loved us so much. And it's something to be said. They didn't have to mention Anna. You know, they didn't have to in those times. You know, it wasn't the most popular thing to mention a, a woman. But, you know, just highlighting her there is super special because it reminds me of how Jesus just loved women. I mean, who was it that came and, and saw that Jesus's body wasn't there? It was Mary. And who was the one that confessed? And he told her to go tell everybody about how he has risen. She was testifying, yeah. prophesying, telling everybody, yeah. you know? So I, it's, it's so beautiful to me when I think about how Jesus, the son of God, uh, just loved women. He loved us and he, he gave us our proper place and you could be a prophet, a prophetess. You know, and I love that. I just love, I just know for me, it encouraged me to see that about Anna, even though she's in her old age. And another thing to unpack about her is that she's old, that she's old, but she wasn't bitter. How many elderly people do you know who are bitter, who aren't, who are just complaining about everything, about, you know, not getting a prayer answer, not you know, uh, getting healed or, and here comes Anna in her ripe old age, widowed and glorifying Jesus. You know, he was leaping for joy. Um, so I was thinking about that when, as you were speaking, just that how beautiful heart she is and how we want to age gracefully. I mean, that's in the Bible that we should age gracefully without being bitter, you know, and I hope and pray that I'm one of those beautiful women. <laughs> Yeah, that we don't get all crotchety and grumpy, right? Like, right. yeah. <laughs> when you think about um, women back in that day, and you said a really a, a couple of things that are really important, I think, Jamie, and that is Jesus recognized women and the important role that we play. Mm -hmm. Jesus had a recognition, and I believe it stems from his mother because I believe he had a very good relationship with his mother. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. She pushed him into turning water into wine, and he was like, "Woman, my time is not now." But right. well. and then she's like, "You just do whatever to my boy tells you to do." So there was this love and respect for his ima, um, which is you know, mom in Hebrew, and and he loved her. He respected her. He respected her so much, and this is why I want to look at Jesus for just a moment in his respect for women. When Jesus was on the cross, he knew that it wasn't just, he, he became a son at this one moment in time when he looks at John and he tells him, son, behold your mother, mother, behold your son, because he wanted his mother taken care of because he knew this is it. I'm not going to be here. I'm doing what my father has called me to do, but I have a responsibility to the woman that raised me. So I've got to make sure she's taken care of when I'm gone. So one of the last things that we read that he says on the cross mm -hmm. is take care of his mom. That's powerful. And that says a lot about his relationship with her and how he viewed women and the, the important part that we play mm -hmm. in the kingdom of heaven. Yes. And so, so right that a woman would be there when he is brought to the temple to be blessed, mm -hmm. to be dedicated mm -hmm. by his mom and his dad. Like, it's only right that Anna would be there. Now, mm -hmm. one of the things that's just practical that we know about Anna is that, okay, she was married and then she's made a widow really quick. Chances are she was pretty young, you know? They were getting married at like 13 back then. Yeah. That's what I read too. 13, so, 14. 
Yeah. So, you know, if we take that and we add in that she was only married for seven years, we're talking, she's 20 and a widow. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, did she even have any kids? Because if she had children, they would have been very young. So they wouldn't have been able to take care of her. Because right. that would have been the responsibility of a son to take care of his mother. Mm -hmm. It sounds like she possibly didn't have any kids. Mm -hmm. That's what I read too. I felt the same way that, you know, because she devoted herself to prayer and fasting and to the, and in the temple. And, you know, prayer is, you know, oftentimes indeed characteristics of prophetic prophecy prophetic people because you look at Daniel you know who's praying and fasting and yeah. and you look at other and that's some of the commentary I read was that it was comparing how Anna fasted and prayed prayed and fasted you know just constantly and so did um so did Daniel and many others yeah in the Bible and those are characteristics of prophets yes of what they do um, because they realize there's an outcome <laughs> with prayer and fasting. There's an outcome. And the outcome came for her, but it was very delayed. Um, but it happened. And she, again, wasn't bitter. She was encouraged. She she kept doing it because she knew that, that there was going to be an ends to the means. And because she, she believed in God. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, faithfulness and patience are two things that I think of when I think of Anna. Two mm -hmm. It's like right off the bat, she was faithful and she was patient. Mm -hmm. Eight years, eight mm -hmm. years fasting and praying in the temple day and night, waiting for God to move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he does. And then she gets mm -hmm. and it's so exciting for her. You know, you yes. so we've got this woman. There are there are many women in today's society that think that their life is finished when they lose their partner, when they become a widow. Mm -hmm. Oh, but that was just the beginning for Anna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't that she didn't want to be married, but she felt the Lord's calling upon her life. And therefore she dedicated herself to him. Mm -hmm. So if yes. there are women that are listening right now, that <laughs> yeah. feel that you're in a season where you've become a widow or you feel lonely, maybe you've never been married. Mm -hmm. Do not discredit that time as God's time. That time is his time. He's maybe pulled you aside and isolated you, separated you so that you can intercede for other people because sure. you have a calling upon your life, but you might not be able to fulfill that calling if you are married or if you have children. Mm -hmm. Now, marriage is a wonderful thing. And so we're not discrediting that by any means. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that if you are married, God doesn't use you either. Okay. Mm -hmm. What I do is I want to speak life to the women out there that feel like they have no purpose. Mm -hmm. That maybe their identity was caught up in a relationship because, you know, I, I know you get this, Jamie, like John and I've been married for 25 years. When we walk into a room, that's John and Chanda. We are like, it's right. like, it's like we're one, you know, um, I, I have, I wonder what it would be like. And it must be very difficult to have been one unit for mm -hmm. so long. And then that piece of you is taken away. Mm -hmm. And so her purpose, especially back in that time would have been to have had children, to have run a household, so on and so forth. And that's all gone. And instead of woe is me, she says, nope, going to go to the temple. I'm going to dedicate myself to the Lord and pray. Right. Wow. And met right. the son of God. <laughs> yes. And meets the son of God, right? Because why? Because she decided that she would be faithful to God. So what did he do because of her faithfulness? He rewarded her with singing her prayer for the Messiah to be answered. Like mm -hmm. that rewards faithfulness. Mm -hmm. We've got to remember that because we might also be in situations or season in our life where we're just faithful. We're just doing it. We're doing the work that God called us to do. We read our Bible, we pray, we go to church, we serve where we're called to serve and we tell others about Christ and we just do it. We don't see any fruit right now. Mm -hmm. Just keep being faithful. Just keep following the Lord. Just keep saying those prayers because he will answer you because he is 
he rewards faithfulness with his faithfulness. Yes. He does. And, you know, he wants you to have that peace and that joy that surpasses all understanding. I mean, you know, for the Wranglers out there, I mean, name an elderly person right now. Name one in your head that you know right now that that is the epitome of growing, aging gracefully in the Lord. And I'm telling you that that woman that you know, and I have one, I have one. It was Miss Betty mm-hmm. and she's on in glory now. And she was a widower. Oh, but she loved Jesus, even though her whole body was falling apart. I mean, girlfriend would sit, you know, we'd come over and visit with her. She'd mm-hmm. be sitting in that chair with her Bible in her lap, just mm-hmm. praising. And you can hear her singing to Jesus. And when you walk in the room, it was, Hey, sweetie. Hey, honey, hey, let me make you a sandwich. I mean, I'm just telling you, gracious servant heart, just the most kindest soul, full of the Holy Spirit. And to the day she died, she was glorifying. In fact, the caretaker that was taking care of her, she led her to Jesus. Wow. Praise the Lord. Testified to the Lord at her funeral. And I was there. And I, she wanted me to sing the song, um, fill my cup, Lord. That was her testimony, yeah. fill my cup, Lord. And that, it just think about that person and you will know that to the day you're done to you take your last breath. If you could just grow in grace like that, like Miss Betty, those are the women. Oh right yeah. There. We need to come alongside as younger women mm-hmm. and we'll learn from, and, um, so Amen. many can think that as they age, there is no purpose for them. They're not having children anymore. They have grandchildren, but the grandchildren have grown up and they've moved on. And so mm-hmm. they wonder, where is my purpose in life? Mm-hmm. Oh, there's always a purpose. God's always got a purpose for you. He doesn't mm-hmm. care what your ages and numbers or how your physical body is, is doing. I mean, he can mm-hmm. up with things, but he's going to use you regardless is what I'm trying to say. That's right. And I would have, that's evident throughout the whole Bible. I mean, how many times have you seen elderly people have miracles? I mean, we're looking at Sarah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, come on. I mean, God has got a sense of humor. Yes, he does. Hello. (laughs) He He really does. He does. And, and, you know, and, and it's funny because like with her, you, you mentioned, you know, the person you think of as Betty. I think of my mother-in-law whose name is Betty. And, um, (laughs) And let me tell you, Betty, um, she got divorced many years ago and she never remarried. She never dated anybody. She dedicated her life to serving the Lord and to her children. And to this day, she serves God with everything in her being. And she is 86. Yeah. Mm. I mean, she's amazing. And I look at her and I think, Lord, I hope that I remain as active and faithful to you as she is when I'm that age. I mean, just, just phenomenal. So you have a purpose, ladies, no matter what your age is, no matter what your marital status is, God has a purpose for you and a plan. And we can identify with Anna in various different ways. And so that is one way we can identify her with her, but she also, um, her reaction to Jesus, I just love was in, it was praise instantaneously. She began to praise. Mm. Shouldn't that be our response when we encounter Jesus? We should yeah. be ready to praise him mm. right off the bat. That should be our first thought. His praise shall always be on our lips. Yeah. So that was something else I saw within Anna. It was just like you said, joy, praise. She's there. She recognizes, you know, who it is. And, and here's the other thing. She wanted to tell others about it. She wanted other people to know. Yeah. You could contain it. Yeah. 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 And so why would we want to be silent about Jesus? We should be wanting to tell everybody else about him Mm -hmm. the exact same way that she did. I mean, she got to see him in the flesh. We didn't have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And we believe. And so that Jesus tells us our faith is greater. That's what he told Thomas. Those that haven't seen me, but believe Mm -hmm. they're greater than you, buddy. 
because you had to see me. You wanted to touch the nail prints in my hands to believe. Mm -hmm. And so I look at her and I just think, man, do you know what the name Anna means? It's so beautiful. It means grace. Mm -hmm. It's just like, what? And you know, there were a handful of other prophets in the Bible. So she falls in with a good group of women. Um, Miriam, Deborah, which we're probably going to talk about Deborah at some point this summer. Hulda, who was Isaiah's wife. Now, mm -hmm. I haven't done much research on her, but I now want to. She's a pro she was a prophetess. Yes. She, she was, was a, a prophetess as well. Isaiah's wife. So can you imagine? Yeah. Oh, watch out. Don't do anything wrong. Because mm -hmm. husband and wife team on prophet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there are the four unmarried daughters of Philip that are mentioned in the New Testament. So there's mm -hmm. only Anna and these ladies that are mentioned in the New Testament. And then you have those ladies of the Old Testament. Now, Miriam was Moses' sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's not a lot of prophetesses listed. If say prophetesses 10 times. I know, and I have a trouble saying it too. <laughs> see those female prophets out there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to say female prophets because I can't say prophetess. It just sounds, it just doesn't well, roll off. And then tongue. you add the S's in there, the prophetesses. Prophetesses. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she just, she exudes, and I said this already, patience, mm -hmm. dedication, faithfulness. She was trusting. She was mm -hmm. hopeful and an intercessor. Mm -hmm. Ooh, what a category of traits to have. Mm -hmm. And you got mentioned and you're talked about in just three little verses in Luke. Mm -hmm. And so we're sitting here talking, what, 30 minutes already about it? I mean, I, there, like I said, there's so much to unpack here. So much with her. And, um, you know, I love the fact that, hey, she could have remarried. But she didn't. She chose to dedicate her life to God. That's, that's big. She chose God over remarrying because she was young enough. See, she hadn't like gone past her use by date, if you want to put it that way. She still could have had children. She still could have married. She still could have, could have, could have, could have. But she said, no, I choose you, God. I want to serve you day and night in your house. I want to pray. I want to believe. I want to ask you. I want to seek things. I want to see the Messiah come for our people to deliver us. Give me that opportunity. Let me tell you, when she died, she died happy. She knew yeah. salvation had come. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not saying she died right away because we don't know when Anna died. <laughs> but I'm telling you, she most likely died before he crucified before his miracles had even been done. I mean, gosh, can you imagine the conversation she and Simeon had after that? Oh, I'm sure it was, it was amazing. I'm sure it was just full, full of joy. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then telling other people. Yeah. And then people would listen because those two were the voice of God at that time. Yes. They were known as the prophet and prophetess. Yes. That you said they were it. in high regard, very high regard because they were at the temple. They would have been listened to. And I just, I think that, you know, when we look at her, she didn't want to be anywhere else, but in the presence of God. And shouldn't that be our heart's desire, no matter what category we fall into in today's society, married, unmarried, single, you know, grandmother, mother aunt sister whatever you are shouldn't we just want to please the lord and be in his presence as much as we can so i look at anna and and i think what a wonderful woman of god she had a heart after the lord to serve him and I wonder what her tasks were within the temple, because we know that the tribe of Levi served in the temple. And we know that there were, you know, specific tribes that did different things from 
lighting the incense and going, you know, all of those things. But um, I wonder what else she did that we just don't know about. I wonder what her duties were. It might have just been be there and pray. Just be faithful. Because so many times we learn about the character of God through other people. And so people would have learned how faithful God is through her because she was not just faithful, but she turned around and saw the blessings of God and saw the promises fulfilled through Jesus and then was able to tell other people, but our God is faithful and he keeps his promises. That's right. That's right. That's her ta her testimony, Yeah. you know, her testimony. And that's us. What is your testimony? Mm. You know, what is it? Because that's something that nobody can take away from you. That's right. Is that's your right. testimony and who God, what God is doing in your life and prophesying about where you're at and why you are who you are today. And it, it's a beautiful thing to know that you, no one can ever take that away from you. And it is that conviction of knowing of your identity in Christ it's so good and it's so freeing and to share that. And so, yeah, Anna, man, she had a testimony that would rock anybody's world to say, I have seen him. I have seen the Messiah. He has finally come. He is the one that I have been fasting and praying for. And it came to fruition. And how amazing is that? That that was the testimony and the prophecy that she was able to share with all the people in the temple and everyone else, obviously, because she was held in high regard. You know, she was, she was known and, you know, she had a good reputation. Yeah. You know? Yeah. She was definitely, you know, respected. And because for her to get mentioned in the Bible, she definitely was respected. She was definitely looked upon as, as someone who, like you said, we hold in high regard. Mm-hmm. And, um, but what an example of, I just keep going back to it because I think so many people need to hear it when we hold steady and we stay within the places that God has called us to, and we pursue him with every ounce of our being, he mm -hmm. will be faithful to the promises he has laid out for right. us. Yes, there are it's so for his glory. Many, yeah. So, I mean, and I'm not going to go off on this because that's a whole nother teaching, but Hebrews 11 is really the faith hall of fame. Mm -hmm. Not one of those people that is listed got to see the promises of God fulfilled the way that Anna did. They believed and they lived and they walked and they were faithful. But man, Anna, she got to see it. She got to live it. She got to breathe it. She probably got to hold baby Jesus. Now I'm just taking liberty with my imagination here. And she probably kissed those cheeks and she kissed those hands. And she probably smelled him because babies smell good. Mm -hmm. They just have a different scent. And she probably spoke to him and said, looking in through the face of God, I've been praying for you. Mm -hmm. I've been waiting for you. Mm -hmm. Here you are. Right. I mean, can you imagine what Mary and Joseph was <laughs> Sorry, I got all teary because I can't imagine that intimate moment. Because mm -hmm. we know that Simeon even, like, mm -hmm. is, I mean, there's a little bit more about Simeon in there because he get, he just goes off mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. earlier on in the chapter. But man, mm -hmm. they, knew. they were told, hey, you're about to have the Messiah you're about to have a huge responsibility on your shoulders. But they didn't know anybody else knew about it. Mm -hmm. And I even think for some reason, I think that it says they were like astounded um, that they were just kind of like surprised and taken back. They must've been like, Whoa, okay. what's happening? Yeah. But she was special. So, so mm -hmm. special. And so I want to tell each and every woman that is listening today, you are special. You are held in high regard by the Lord God Almighty. You choose him and you put him first and you intercede and you are faithful and you hold tight to the promises that God has laid before you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to speak life into every single woman, no matter what your age, color, or creed is. That's right. 
that Jesus has a plan and a purpose for your life. So look mm -hmm. into the face of the Messiah, the one who came to save you and celebrate the life he's given you and go out and just choose to be faithful and patient mm -hmm. as you pray into the things that he's laid on your heart. That's right. Mm, I'm thinking about that worship song. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Just, just day and night, just pray without ceasing and don't, don't give up. Just keep pressing in, pressing into the word of God. He will answer you. It may not be in the timing that you want. And that's why we have examples in the Bible to help encourage us. I just thank God for his word. And I thank God for the elderly women in my life that have encouraged me. And, and I've seen seen the goodness of God in these people and the examples that they've run into and finished the race and we have that we have that encouragement so find those good women in your life so that you may be encouraged not only by their examples but also what the word of God tells us how we can be encouraged so just keep your head up don't give up yeah absolutely absolutely so be encouraged today that's you know that's the final word i believe that both jamie and i want to resonate every listener be encouraged god mm -hmm. he has a purpose so hold right. and um we'll be back in a couple of weeks with miss brandy pope so excited and then we're going to just continue on through a series of various different women in the bible and we're just allowing god to guide and direct us as to which ladies he wants us to highlight because each of them has a very special story just like you um and be encouraged there's an attack upon women in today's society and that's one of the biggest things that jamie and i feel strongly about is that we want to encourage women to be strong in the lord amen Alrighty, guys. Well, that's us over and out. We love you. Be blessed and wrangle in the freedom. <laughs>